How good was the 2023 Lexus Melbourne Cup? I'm going to analyze it and express my thoughts and opinions in this video. So we'll get straight on with it. The first thing you need to watch is barrier number four, the barrier that Sulkham jumps out of. So watch gate four, Sulkham. You can see it misses the start. Matt Hill, I think, said by about three or four lengths. That was just an estimate. Wasn't as much as what he missed in the Caulfield Cup. And we'll, we'll get onto this a bit later. But I think due to the fast tempo, was able to weave through the field and run a very good race. And it ended up running second in the end. Um, the key chances, Vauban jumped really well. There was a little bit of umming and ahhing as to whether he would jump cleanly. Because he has been slow away on some occasions overseas but he's jumped well and he's put his himself in a position so we can see early serpentine was the most likely leader went straight to the front future history worked across from a middle stall to be outside of it and then magical lagoon and bound declare was very prominent trying to replicate what he did in the 2019 melbourne cup when winning if you if you notice the other key chances in the race absurd gets to a good position just in front of midfield two out or one out um and gold trip is on the fence uh, next to it and they're just forward of midfield which I think probably wanted to be a bit further back as we can see the top three um, without a fight Shiraz and Sulkham all coming from off midfield and that was due to the frantic tempo set up front by Serpentine so Serpentine's run 11-3 for the 28 to the 26 12-0-1 for 26 to 24 and then it's gone 12-3 and almost 13 but it's a high 12-9 number so Serpentine's running this along at a very genuine clip. What Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Brock front runners do is they just run all day. And that's what they tried to replicate here. Also, with Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott, they probably thought military missions in the race will help that horse out too. If it's a fast speed, they'll be able to run on and that'll give military mission every chance. Young Zach Lloyd gets stuck three wide on Calipore, and then he has to stride up to be outside Serpentine, which is what gets the pace going again. You can see it turns from 13 from the 20 to the 18, just straight back into the 12-3 from the 18 to the 16 and the 16 to the 14. So they've really ramped it up again. So when they were meant to get a breather up front and the horses just up settling behind them on speed were meant to get a breather they had to keep going again and that's what was detrimental to their chances and why the horses off midfield was suited so you can see to the 1200 meters they've run a negative um 2.29 seconds which is about uh just below 15 lengths quicker to what they would normally run standard time for 3200 meters at flemington so they've gone quick you can see serpentine they're slowing down up front because he's Serpentine's going and they're still running, you know, plus 048, plus uh, 052 seconds for the 12 to the 10 and the 10 to the 8. So now the runs come. Vauban, I reckon Ryan Moore goes too early. And the fast speed um, matched up with him going too early is what cost Vauban the race. And he wouldn't have won anyway, but he finished well behind. Absurd was just too close to that frantic tempo, presented itself and just wasn't good enough to hold on. Sulkham, you can see, runs up behind traffic trying to get out and without a fight's already off and gone at the 250, it's pounced. Sulkham's trying to go back to the inside now. Shiraz runs on well and you can see the horses that finish fourth, fifth, sixth. Ash run comes from the back. Interpretation comes from the back but gallant performance without a fight and Sulkham would have gone very close had it not been held up and jumped the gates. That is how Mark Zara and without a fight won the 2023 Lexus Melbourne Cup.